I have, uh, I have some rather disturbing news. You're not going to be happy about it. But, uh, you guys have a brother now. I'm very sorry. <laughs> what are you doing? Hey, sir, come back here. Oh, who's that cat? Who was that cat in the reflection? Who's the, oh, the dog guard? Very scary. <laughs> so, this is Milk Toast. Probably the sweetest cat ever. Uh, he's got a little bit of a blood clot in his eye and he's very afraid of the dog guard right now. Come here, buddy. Hey! Okay, so I have some explaining to do, I think. I'm gonna try to include all of the information here because you probably have a lot of questions. Uh, on Wednesday night, I went to the grocery store and it was late at night and as I was pulling into the grocery store, it's off of a very busy road. There's actually a freeway entrance on that road, so a lot of times cars are going like 45 miles an hour. I pulled into the grocery store and a cat ran across and I almost hit it with my car and it ran into a bush. That was you, dude. <laughs> Okay, so I I kind of went up to the bush and he didn't want to come out or anything. And so then I went into the grocery store and I got all my groceries. Should we like, I feel like this is like a proper story. Should I set the camera up? So I went into the grocery store and I got my groceries and I stopped at the cat aisle and I bought some cat treats thinking, I think it was just because I just that morning, that very morning, I had got cat food for my grandfather's cats and fed them. And so I guess I had it in my mind that I would like just get it some treats, see if I could lure it to me so that I could see if it had a, a tag. Um, or at the very least, I could just throw some treats into the bushes and I would go home knowing that I had given it some food for the night. So I went outside and the cat was still there by my car and I, oh I hear Paige in the other room. They have not met. I have let them uh, come up to her crate. I'm keeping her in him, 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 it's a boy. Uh, <laughs> this is all very sudden. I'm keeping him in a big crate in my garage. Um, I have this huge crate, it's for like giant breeds of dogs and I only have it because when I take Paige and Molly up to my grandparents in the winter, I put them both in it and throw a bunch of blankets in and like food and water. Um, so I've been keeping him there and he has a litter box and a bed and water and food uh, just because I want to make sure he doesn't have any diseases. He actually does have roundworm, uh, so he's currently getting medicine for that. Um, and then tomorrow, I will, well Monday, today, uh, I will be taking him back to the vet to get checked for distemper and then also get all of his vaccines. So I don't want to introduce, um, I don't want to introduce them yet. As you can tell, he's just the sweetest cat. So here's what happened. Um, I was throwing the, the treats and he, he was coming uh, kind of close to me, but he was very afraid of me. He would not get near me. And uh, this man came and he saw me, like he, he saw me kneeling uh, on the ground by this bush and he was like, what are you doing? And I said, I'm trying to get this, this stray cat. And he got in his car and I noticed that he wasn't turning his car on. Uh, and I guess he didn't want to scare the cat away because the cat was about halfway between the bush and me, uh, eating all the treats that I was throwing the cat. So the cat kept coming closer, you, you kept coming closer and closer and closer to me. Uh, but anytime I moved a muscle, he would like go back a step. Uh, and he's really, really afraid and shy. And finally, I mean, it was probably about at least, it was over 15 minutes, maybe closer to 20. Uh, he got close enough to me and I dumped the bag out and he just got really excited and just started, like put his face down in the grass, just eating all the treats and I grabbed him. And I don't know why I grabbed him. It's kind of, the, don't do that uh, because 
I expected him to either scratch me or bite me or at least squirm and try to get away. Um, but as you can see, he's very friendly um, and he didn't move at all. He didn't move at all. Oh, he's purring. Can you hear it? So I threw him in my car and the guy that was next to me in his car was like cheering. He was like, you did it. You were so patient. I can't even believe it. Um, and I drove home and when I got home, well, well, first I checked to see if he had a collar or a tag and he didn't. Uh, that was my big plan was just to call his owners and just be like, do you know your cat is, you know, in a parking lot that's at a really busy, busy, like the, the biggest intersection in the city. Um, and he didn't have a tag, which I understand is not that common for cats to have collars and tags. Um, so I took him home and I put him in the garage. Actually, it was really hard to get him out of the car. Uh, he wedged himself underneath the driver's seat and he wouldn't move. And I had to keep moving the seat back and forth and back and forth and then take a cereal box and stick it underneath the seat and push him out. Uh, and again, I grabbed him and he didn't do anything. Here, look, look at the camera, okay? Look at the camera. But he, honestly, he just, ow! He just likes to be held. He's not even that interested in toys. He just likes to be held. I guess I'm a cat person now. The next morning, Thursday morning, I took him to the vet to scan for a microchip. Uh, if you didn't know, uh, that's something that they can do with dogs and cats. They implant a little microchip here in the back. It doesn't hurt them at all. And it just stays in their skin, underneath the skin. And you can scan it and it will tell you the owner's uh, information if they have it registered. So the vet scanned it and scanned it several times all over its body. It doesn't have a microchip. So then I thought, okay, well, if it has an owner, I could at least maybe go put up signs uh, and try to find the, the cat's owner. I asked if it was neutered because if a cat's neutered then that's a good chance that it has an owner that cares about it because it took the time to, to get it neutered um, and it wasn't neutered. Uh, at that point the vet told me that most likely it had been on the streets for a while because he's older than six months. Um, and if a cat is older than six months and is not neutered and is the male, uh, he'll start marking his territory everywhere indoors and peeing everywhere. Um, and so usually owners get really, really tired of that. What are you doing? What are you doing? He's just purring. What is happening right now? What does he want? So anyway, he weighed 5.8 pounds. So he's pretty tiny. This eye, when I uh, rescued him, he was completely swollen shut. Uh, and the next morning, it, oh, he wants to get down. Uh, the next morning, the eye had opened, but there was blood in the eye everywhere. Um, and it turns out it was a blood clot. And I asked what that could have been. And she said that it was trauma, like it was hit in the eye. Uh, so I said, okay, was it hit by a car? And the vet said no, because it would have had other injuries. It just has the eye. So what either happened, I, well, I asked if it could have been a cat fight. And she said no, because that would be scratches, not like enough force to actually break uh, blood vessels and cause a blood clot in its eye. So the likely scenario is that maybe he ran straight into a twig and poked his eye. That's definitely the most possible. Uh, however, the vet had also said before that she had seen cats with similar injuries that had been shot by a BB gun uh, or abused. Oh, what's the cat getting into? Look, look, it's a TIE fighter. It's, ah! He's not interested in the TIE fighter. What about the crinkly ball? What about the crinkly ball? So to recap, he didn't have a tag, didn't have a microchip, wasn't neutered, had an injury to its eye, was in a grocery store parking lot uh, off of a busy road and also has roundworm. So at that point, the vet told me that if he did have an owner, uh, it really isn't a good owner uh, because, oh, look, oh my gosh, he is looking at the poster. Look, it's you. You're, <laughs> you're milk toast. Do you know that? That's so crazy that I have a Paige and Molly poster and then a cat named Milk Toast and then here you are. So anyway, its owner wasn't very good 
uh, if it was letting this cute, adorable cat uh, roam around a busy intersection like that. So at that point, I kind of decided not to put up posters because the other problem is that he is a very beautiful cat. He is a, I believe he is a lilac Lynx Point Siamese cat. And so what would end up happening probably is uh, I would just get a lot of calls saying, uh, that's not my cat, but I will take that cat. So buddy, here we are. I want you guys, I'm talking to you guys now, to not get too attached. How can you not though? Because I have not made a decision yet whether I can keep him or not. I have the resources to get him all of the proper vaccines and medical care. He has eye drops uh, for the blood in his eye that you can, let me try to zoom in on it. Hey buddy, hey can you see the blood in your eye? It's kind of everywhere. You can't see it that well because it's the color of his pupil, but it actually is a big blood clot, which is covering his entire pupil. So he doesn't see very well uh, right now. <sighs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to keep him, guys. I love him so much. He's such a sweet cat. This breed apparently is just really smart and affectionate and just really good natured. Uh, the problem is I'd love to stick you outside and have you catch mice that want to come in in the winter but you're such a little boy that I'm afraid that you won't be very good at that. I don't know if you'll be very good at that. Um, you can see I got him a little collar. This is from Target. Apparently most cat collars are breakaway collars so this is a dog collar. This is all very new to me. In fact I actually went to Petco to buy supplies, so I'll put that footage in now. Okay, I am so lost, and I welcome all of your suggestions in the comments, all of you cat owners. I am new to this, I am a dog expert, and I'm a cat noob. So here's what I have so far. I have a food, and I also have these treats. This is Canada, this is blue, uh, chicken and trout treats, salmon food, uh, I have the TIE Fighter toy, <laughs> oh no! Uh, I also got this little turtle uh, with catnip that you put in it, don't know why, and then I got a little crunchy ball uh, for the toys. And then I already have the litter, I already have the litter box, I have the water bowl, and then I have a fishy tag. Anyway, yeah, this is milk toast. Uh, feel free to leave me questions if I didn't answer questions. I feel like there's probably some things that I did not answer. Um, Molly, I know, is great with cats. Uh, Paige and Polly uh, do not like cats. However, everything I read says, well, if you let your dog get scratched by a cat once, that will put an end to your dog not liking cats. Um, the other thing is that I'm kind of allergic to this cat. I haven't had a huge allergic reaction yet, but anytime his little claws poke my skin, uh, I get like a welt. So I'm kind of allergic to you, sir. Uh, so <laughs> you won the lottery though, because what that probably means is that I'm probably going to build you the coolest outdoor cat pen completely enclosed with like a scratching post and a tree and like little uh <laughs> little shelves to run and jump on and toys and a little like a cubby that is heated and has like your bed and water uh, I'm probably gonna build him the most awesome outdoor cat pen ever and this is his temperament after being pretty much in a cage for the last four days um, so I don't think he's sick. The vet said he seemed in really good health and he's young. He's just a super chill cat. You're making it very difficult to not love you. I kept saying at the vet, like, please bite me. Please scratch me so that I have a reason to give you away to a good home and not keep you. But you are just the sweetest boy. You're timid and shy, which if you didn't know, milk toast actually, uh, the word means shy and submissive and kind of like a wimp. Uh, and you are just 
You are just that boy. Hey. I'll try to provide updates on the vlog when I can. I might be posting more on my vlogging channel, but I wanted to post it here, obviously, because I had shared it on social media, and you actually, cat, already exist in Minecraft. I guess you didn't know that. <gasps> That's so weird. This cat's only about seven months old, so that means that milk toast in Minecraft came before you. Feel free in the comments below to ask any questions that I have not answered here, uh, and I will do my best to answer them about the cat. Give me advice. I've never owned a cat. I am a dog expert. I know every kind of dog product that's out there, and I don't know how many times you're supposed to scoop a litter box. My inclination is to scoop it after every time he uses it because it smells horrible. It's literally the worst. How much do you feed it? I've been told a fourth cup total a day, uh, which is like an eighth cup per meal, which seems really stingy. Maybe he's just a very hungry cat. But anyway, yeah, I got a cat. <laughs> I will keep you updated uh, on what the cat is doing. Uh, but until next time, uh, Paige and Polly and Molly and Milk Toast love you. Uh, go rescue a pet. <laughs> totally forgot to mention, I have uh, Paige and Molly Christmas socks. I finally have a merch item that's under $10. The youth size are $7.50 uh, and the adults are $10. And you do have to pay for shipping, but shipping is worldwide. And they're really, really thick. They're very fuzzy and warm. What do you think, Milk Toast? Do you, do you like them? This is how you're meeting Paige and Molly. Oh, they love you. They love you. Anyway, so I will leave a link in the description uh, to the Paige and Molly Christmas socks, uh, and that's it. Okay, bye.